welcome to another up close video. Today's one is looking at designer's choice number 21 which is called Corner Creations and you can tell why it's called that because there are tons of different options for um, all sorts of different decorative corners but you also get one die that gives you that ability to turn it into a little pocket as well. So they're brilliant for like interactive cards or for in your memory books and stuff or just using the gorgeous decorative panels either as a corner or building them up into like um, a giant overall kind of design for a larger card or a half a kind of doily design for a smaller card or even using some of the uh, smaller little patterns that are in here as well to create different cards too. Um, so I've had a really great time playing with all these. I've actually got uh, five different cards to show you. Three of them I filmed in the sped up video that should be up tomorrow or relatively soon around the time of this one. Um, and then two extra samples that I was just making as well. But there's also um, four dies I think that I didn't use. I didn't use this one, uh, this one or these two triangles inside each other. But I have given you lots of ideas for um, triangle uh, dies in the past when we've had like small little corners and things um, and you could adapt uh, any of these like concepts that I've used with these two corners with just the straight edge one and turn them into little squares and stuff um, and also the designs I've done with I any of these designs you can still do with these two combined because they make the same shape as well so even though I haven't used a few of the dies you can still definitely um, use those ones in some of the cards that I've created as well if you wanted to um, you know recreate them or anything so let's have a look at this month's designers choice I haven't got the proper folder but you will get it with a sticker down here and the uh, die sets fit inside the designers choice a5 die storage folder or the orange one as well uh, which is just a normal die storage folder if you um, wanted somewhere to store them or if you have the kits they do fit in the kit binders as well um, or they just do fit in a basic A5 binder as well. You don't get a magnetic sheet with the uh, designer's choices. Mine's not on one anyway, but um, you do just get them on acetate. But I do recommend putting them on a um, an magnetic sheet if you want to, because especially if you're going to use them a lot, the obviously the sticky will wear off the little um, foam pads that are holding all of these on, and eventually you might end up with all the dies like falling to the bottom of the pocket, um, which you know it's fine they're contained, but you might uh, lose one or misplace one if you knock the folder off the shelf and they all fly everywhere and you can't remember where they were supposed to be or anything. Um, just having a magnetic sheet in there does help keep them all together. So I usually buy uh, cheap A4 ones off of like eBay or Amazon and then trim them in half and then just make sure they're going to fit inside the pocket and put them in there as well. Or, um, if you don't mind spending a little bit more money, you could also buy the refills for the A5 folders. I think it's a pack of six, but they are 9 99 uh, but they do come with uh, magnetic sheets inside them, and then they would match, like, other ones, um, you know, if you stored all your dies in the same way. Um, I just thought I'd mention that in case you're wondering the best kind of way to store them. And also, um, all of the links to the Designer's Choice die sets. And um, I did use one extra die set um, as well, which I'll link below as well. They'll be in the description box below the video. There's like a little arrow and you can press it and then the description will appear. Um, and I'll also put them as picture links over on my blog post as well. And the blog post is linked in the description of the video too. Um, and any of the links that I use on my blog posts or in the video description are affiliate links. So if you do use those, if you just click on them and then place your order as you usually would on the Tonic website, whether it is for what I've uh, made the link for, for example Designer's Choice or just anything else you fancy off of the website, um, I'll get a small commission of the amount that you spent um, but it's at no extra cost to you. I know I've said it quite a lot recently and I keep saying I know I've said it quite a lot recently um, but I I just wanted to um, let you know that I do really appreciate you using them. I know some of you have probably heard that loads of times um, but just in case you haven't heard it, um, thank you for using them. Whether you n like intended to click on them because you knew it was an affiliate link and you wanted to support me or whether you just clicked on them anyway and used them um, I really really do appreciate it so thank you very much um, so let's get on to looking at this month's designer's choice I have to say when I first got it I was kind of like do we really need another corner die set but actually um, I do think these are really nice designs and they are smaller so I don't I can't 100% remember the sizes of the... They bought out um, pocket ones a while... Well, quite a while ago now. Um, there were like four different sets with different designs in. And they were slightly more on the larger side. But these are really nice 
size for small cards um let's just give you a quick measurement they are roughly like between sort of seven and eight centimeters for this sort of um length of them so they wouldn't quite go all the way across um, a small card they're quite nice dinky kind of sizes and if you did want to use um, two of them like together sort of um, creating them into a square shape actually oh I didn't try this I've got an idea now this one that I said I didn't use if you took one of the other designs it makes a square. I can't believe I didn't think of that before. But that kind of size square is perfect for layering onto your smaller A2, A6 kind of size card. Even actually a slimline card or a DL card. I'm sure you could get like three of these on there. Yeah, they're less than seven. Um, well, maybe with a, a cutting edge they might be a bit more than seven. But I'm sure you could get three of them across a slimline or DL card, which would look really great. I cannot believe I didn't think of that. Okay, well, I'm, I'm glad I thought of it now so that I could tell you that it does actually work like that. Um, I can't remember what I was just saying, but <laughs> at least um, I've shown you that, so that's quite good, actually. So that then you've got even more possibilities than um, what I thought you had, because you can actually do that as well, which is brilliant. And you could even, oh yeah, as well, because this one is in two parts and you have this gorgeous little shape, you could even do the same thing, cut these two together and then just cut an extra one of this on the other side and that would also make a square. Oh, that's really cool. Oh, I'm really annoyed I didn't think of that before. Anyway, um, at least you've got an extra way of using it that I haven't used it, so that's quite good to know. So anyway, uh, getting back to looking at the actual die set, we have got some beautiful sentiments. I really love this one. It says, just for you. Um, I thought this was going to be too fancy for me, but I do really like it. I don't know if you can... Um, read it backwards very easily because it's so scripty but it does say just for you and this one says on your day um, and it's they're both so fine like the scripty detail all the tiny little flourishes and stuff and the actual width that it cuts out is so fine it's so beautiful as well though and it cuts out really cleanly and they're even not too skinny to be able to stack I I think I did it in both cases actually. I stacked two together. Um, I think one I offset and one I just stack them on top of each other. But you can even stack these sentiments and they fit together really nicely. And because they're so curly, they've kind of got that little bit of leeway to them. So it's really easy to line them up on top of each other. They You can sort of um, manipulate it round a little bit if you need to, which is really great. So I've really been enjoying those sentiments. And you'll see them on the cards as well. But they also have their bubble to go with them too. And I don't know if you can properly sort of imagine, but they have quite a skinny little edge around them, which is really nice as well. Because sometimes uh, you get the bubble and it's like so far away from the sentiment that you've made the sentiment so much bigger that it then covers up more on your card. But I actually like this outside bubble. It's only like, you know, a, a millimetre or two um all the way around so it's not making the sentiment much bigger than it is so I don't mind cutting this one out of cardstock usually I always prefer to do vellum because um, if the bubble is slightly bigger you're not like blocking off that bit of the background or anything but this one is really nice um, tight bubble around the sentiment so um, cutting it out of card does still look really nice um, you could turn this into a shaker like you could cut this one as the um, actual shaker window and stick the intricate die over the top as well um, because it is such a tight bubble you wouldn't see as much of the shaker bits falling around but it's still um, you know an option to do that as well and also with um i didn't actually make any shakers but also with the um the corners they would make brilliant shakers as well because you can um use the different layers and stuff to cut an aperture out that then would be the shaker and then you can add any of the decorative details back over the top as well which is really nice um let's show you the corners next and so maybe i might take them all off actually so we've got multiple different outside edges. There are three that are just an edge that will cut out um, any of the combinations of intricate detail, even these two together. Or there is also the extra one that gives you those glue tabs so that you can create a pocket on the corner of the card or inside the card with a gift card in or um, any sort of use on your memory books as well. And you could even cut 
two of these and kind of overlap you know the other one sort of coming this way and create a bigger pocket as well so you could have stick one onto the card then take the other stick the other onto this side of the card and leave this whole top piece open and then you could fit something bigger and squarer inside the pocket as well rather than you know just having it supported by a corner you could actually um, overlap them to whatever degree you wanted to and create an extra pocket that way even um, on the front of a smaller card you could just have two of them you know sort of overlapping about that much and it would create like a whole pocket on the front of the card which would be great for like an um, RSVP kind of thing as well um, so that somebody you know could take one piece of paper out and send it back to you or you know that kind of thing um, but yeah let's have a look at the actual differences between these I have actually used all of them but I didn't actually compare any of them against each other so these two are the same size so you have basically the option of both the same size but this one has stitches all the way around the perimeter and this one just has stitches slightly further in and just along the sort of scallopy edge to it so there's those two differences and I really like this one um, I think I use this as an underlayer on my card so you can't actually see this one on the card but um, I do really like that just having the stitch on one edge because that's really different. Not a lot of die sets have that kind of detail, it's usually no stitching or all the way around so that's quite um, a unique kind of feature just to have it along one edge which is really lovely. So those are the same size and then this one you would see it underneath this one so this one is slightly bigger just by the scallop that's going along this one and it is an open scallop as well it's got like the little um, almost triangle kind of archways uh, cutting out of it and it also has the dotted detail so the dotted detail I guess is about the same distance in as on uh, this one with the stitching but you would see the scalloped detail um, poking out the edge as well if you if you added this extra layer on top of it which is really nice you can do that um, you know sometimes when your card just needs an extra bit of white or something to help define things you know you cut the bottom layer in white and then add your coloured or patterned paper over the top and that little scallop would help sort of break up the design a little bit and then we also have this actual pocket piece and let me just check that. So they're a different scallop, but I do think they would look nice on top of each other, actually. So the scallopy pocket, the one that's actually got the glue tabs on, is a slightly more uh, rounded scallop, whereas this one is, I suppose, slightly more of a pointed scallop. Um, and they're not exactly the same, but I do think if you were going for a lacy, maybe even vintagey, steampunky kind of a look, uh, layering this up in like whites and browns and stuff, maybe even gold, would look really lovely and give a nice effect. And even having that in white, and it could be like a cloud, you could do a cool, um, oh, maybe even if you had the previous, no, not previous, previous bar one, uh, stamp club, the shoot for the stars I think that one was called and then the one that they re-released that was shoot for the moon and um, this could be like a cloud the pocket could be a cloud and you could have some of the other cloud dies in there maybe have the large crescent moon and all sorts of cool things you could incorporate this as like a cloudy pocket so that would look really lovely um, and then so as well as that one that you could layer up on top you've then also got these two which are the same size um, I think they're the same size actually that one might be slightly bigger the one with just the stitch along the edge might be a teeny tiny bit bigger. Yeah, I think it is actually. Um, but either of those would layer as a matte and layer onto this um, scallopy pocket as well. God, I've been talking for ages. I haven't even got to the detail dies yet. So those are all of the outside edges for these gorgeous details. And then we have these different designs in here. So we've got this one, which has got kind of um, larger petaled flowers and all of the sort of individual petals fall out of it. I think it's symmetrical. It looks pretty symmetrical. Maybe this flower isn't quite, no, this flower's not quite symmetrical, but I think the rest of the design is. So it, give, it would give a really lovely mirrored kind of look. Or if you did um, four of them all coming around in a circle, um, it would give a lovely design with the repeating flowers all the way around the edge of it as well. Um, then this one up here, I didn't actually use it as the whole panel, but 
there are butterflies hiding in here. There is a half one here and there is a full butterfly here and I actually cut that butterfly out and used it in one of my cards as well so I'll show you that and it's pretty easy to snip out as well. There's not too much, um, there's not too many areas where you have to kind of make up the shape of the butterfly. It's mostly just small lines joining to it so it's pretty easy to snip that one out. Then there's also this one which I really like. I use this to make like a half doily um, and you have these like larger little portions here which are perfect for putting a Nouveau drop on or gemstones or something. Um, looks really lovely for that kind of technique. I also thought um, you could you don't have the outside edges to do this but you could do some kind of um multi-layered kind of design for this one and like put one type of card behind just this piece and then another type of card behind just this piece and then leave that as like a frilly open mosaic-y edge um, you might get away with using the outside edge to sort of drag it down um, to get the right shape for that or you could just like undercut it with scissors as well but I do think that would look really nice and then the final one um, I actually use this piece individually on a card but it is um, designed so that you can fit it within this one and then like I showed you near the beginning that piece does actually combine with any of the others to make a perfect square and I really don't know how I didn't even think to try that um, but that's a really gorgeous design that corner one I haven't cut that one but it's got a rose a um, couple of leaves coming out of it, a little daisy kind of flower and almost like a diamond pattern in the background which looks really lovely and then this one has got a tiny little heart in the centre that I noticed when I was cutting it and it's just got some gorgeous um, flowy, almost foliagey kind of swirly vines coming out of it which is really nice um, so I really enjoyed using that one just by itself um, it's kind of a, a very unusual shaped die that Obviously you wouldn't kind of just get this random shaped die in a, a normal like card making die set. But turning, well I know this is actually like more of a card making die set. But you know just using one element kind of gives you a completely different look for your project which is lovely. But saying that actually, um, because they make a square, think of any boxes that you have that um, are square shaped. There was one. I cannot think what the name was. I'm sure I did a video on it though and I made it doubled and then I did it so it opened. I'll put the name on the screen here. But I'm sure there is a square um, box die that came out within the last year I should think um, that might even work with these kind of panels on the side of it as well. Um, that would look really good to sort of um, extend the life of a 3D box set that you might have because you can create your own different decorative panels to go on it as well so um, do think about that when you buy a new die set think about what other die sets you have that it might go on as well because um, then you can get some really unique kind of designs that no one else might have thought to do which is always lovely um, so as well as all of those like larger corner pieces we also have uh, this really ornate kind of corner piece which has that latticey design that fits inside it but you can cut it without that as well then you have this uh, gorgeous corner which is really lovely and swirly I really like that one and it's got like those little curly cues on the side so like I was saying um I think it was last month's designer's choice that had the little curly bits you can kind of hook them around designs as well if you want to to give a completely different look and maybe if you cut a circle and then cut like six or eight of these and had them um, hooking onto the circle it would give more of like um, a six pointed or eight pointed kind of star sort of look to it as well um, and again you can cut that with or without the decorative detail inside and if you want the um, the decorative detail to have a solid piece behind it you just cut one um, that is just like this and then you cut one with this and the decorative piece inside it and then you can layer them up together and then the final two dies are two that I didn't or three that I didn't use um, that is a triangle which again is another corner um, and then you have two different designs that go inside it this one's like a symmetrical swirly flourishy one and this one's got a little butterfly in there as well but I, I've shown you lots of ideas of how to use basic triangles um, before so I thought I'd just uh, kind of kind of show different ideas although I have done a few videos with like corner dies and stuff but hopefully samples that I've done I'll show you a few different ideas or might spark a different idea in your mind as well so um, I'll put these dies away and then I'll come back with my samples 
Okay, so I've got these two samples here, which I was literally just doing before I started filming the previous bit of the video. Um, so they're not quite dry yet, so I don't want to put my finger in one of the drops. I'm, I'm not sure, I, I mean, maybe I should have done a different background for them rather than a Nouveau Drop Squish kind of background. But um, I just wanted to show different ideas for using some of the dyes as well. So this one is snipping out that butterfly that's in one of the decorative panels and I cut it twice. I stuck a little piece of card behind the body to fill it in and then I layered them up together to give a little bit of dimension. So even though there is no butterfly dye in this die set you can still snip out a butterfly to use and you can see it doesn't look too bad like snipping it out. It's not like you've had to um, reinvent part of the butterfly cutting it out with your scissors because part of it's like lost within the outside part of the die you know where there isn't any detail so it's quite an easy one to cut out which is great this is that beautiful fine delicate sentiment that is two of them stacked together and look at the lovely depth that it gives and it's just so fine I mean I, it's probably about the same um like fine detail as the sentiment strip dies you know all of like the cursive swirly sort of um written sentiment dies from tonic but it's just really lovely i don't usually go for such fancy kind of sentiments but it is really nice this one i do really like it so it says just for you and then i've just used like about an inch wide strip of cardstock and then these scallopy portions are the outside edge of one of the um detail dies so i didn't use the pocket one it's the other one um with the actual like holes within the scallopy detail and you can see it's slightly more of a pointy scalloped design um but that is sort of one way of that you can utilize the scalloped edge of these kind of corner dies without actually using them as a corner and snipping out the detail from them as well um i reckon you could also snip out flowers from that same panel as well there's quite a nice large flower within there or you might even be able to snip out um, the rose from that um, different looking dye that I didn't actually end up using um, as as well if you like snipping into your dyes there's a couple of different options for taking bits out then I also did this one which is just an extra card using the opposite background from the previous one I have done this before uh, when we had a die set I think it was a designer's choice die set as well cannot remember what number it was or how long ago it was but I remember I'd used gold and like cream and yellow kind of colors of cardstock and I did a similar um, effect with that so this is using the dainty sort of corner dies with the um, beautiful edges and this has got like the little curly cues poking out of it and just putting four of them together to create almost like um, a doily kind of effect um, and then this one I used half of it here I even actually layered up this one with two corners to make it 3D um, and then I put the last corner over there uh, again I don't know whether I would have done this background maybe just like an ink blended background or even just the plain white in the background uh, might have looked better but anyway, it was just another idea to show you kind of another way of how to use your corners. If you saw that other video, you'll have already known this kind of idea. But just in case you haven't, um, it's just, you know, a, a really unique kind of way of using little corner dies. And you can also do a similar kind of idea, uh, creating borders with them as well. So you like sticking two together like that and then two together again, but pulling these two up here and it kind of almost makes like a straight border because they're almost triangles that would sort of tessellate together nicely. So that's also another way of using the corners in a different way. So that's just two extra cards, which I mustn't put anything on because they're not dry. And then these three are the ones I did in my sped up video. So this one here, I decided to cut that sort of more bolder flower design straight into the two corners of my card panel but I wanted something to edge them so what I did was I took the die that has the glue tabs on that would make a corner pocket and I took one of the layering dies I think it's the one that's actually next to it in the die set and I cut them both together so I then um, if you cut the whole thing you would have ended up with like a skinny little border all the way around but you can just use a scrap of card and just get the scallopy border so therefore it gives you a different kind of effect you could have cut this one from green and then cut this um corner with the 
outside edge into white and then cut the outside edge from the turquoise and laid it up that way and had the green um, as the most background layer and the white as the most foreground layer but just to save card to save um, time of cutting as well you can also do it this kind of way where the the white is the well the turquoise is the most background layer then the white then the green but there's lots of different ways to create this kind of effect but that's just one of them that you could um, create a little border by cutting two of the dice together to get that little scalloped edge and the sentiment here isn't in the die set but it is this mini sentiment die that came out a little while ago with the uh, shaker pockets the shaker creator pockets um, and this is just the hello there one I think they're about 4 99 each but they have been on offer recently so they might still be on offer um, on a bundle but um, I love that sentiment and it just goes really nicely with this kind of um, florally swirly kind of design so that's that one then let's show you this one next so this is that gorgeous just for you again again that's two of them stacked on top of each other and the fine detail is just incredible on this sentiment really like that one um, and then this is two of those um, more intricate ones uh, with these long kind of portions in there I've put those nouveau drops all the way along there I also used my little mini um, clear sticky ink pad and just dragged it along that outside edge and then used some embossing powder this was the glimmering green embossing powder and added that on the outside edge um, and then I've also had like added a strip of glitter and done a few more Nouveau drops sprinkling some of that glitter on to tie it across the card as well but obviously if you like your larger cards you could create this um, with two more of them the other side and make it into a large kind of almost circular doily it does go a bit square because of the way these sort of go to a point so you could have it that way and make it more of like a square sort of doily or this way and make it more of like a diamondy kind of doily as well um, but that would also work really nicely and then the final one um, that I did was this one which is using that weird little shaped die so this little die here it's cut once here once down here once there and then half up here and half down there and I think it just gives a really different kind of a look and because um, the way I space them out you've got a difference in the scalloped edge as well so you've got this is where two of them met so the uh, dip is bigger than where the actual design is joined in the center and then I've done the same idea that I did on this card cutting those two dies together to get that tiny little scalloped edge and I've used a darker green here and a lighter green here and then where there was like larger areas in the center I just used a load of Nouveau drops to kind of make an accent of that area in lots of different sizes and behind um, the apertures in here I've just used a couple of different colours of cardstock and some glitter as well and then that is the on your day sentiment I did uh, shadow it with the dark green um, it's not very well shadowed it's almost practically on top of each other but it, you can see that lot sort of hint of darkness behind there as well which kind of helps it stand out more so um, that is that one and I just realised I didn't tell you the drops that I'd been using just in case you're interested in the colours of drops the ones I used on the background here were dragon scales which is my f one of my favourite dream drops um, the lady liberty which is one of my favourite stone drop colours and then I was also using these two which are the same ones that I used on the other three cards and this was um, bottle green which is actually one of the original colours but I only just purchased this one so um, it was nice to give that one a try it's a gorgeous metallic green it's like an olivey metallic kind of colour and then this one um, this one is called velvet sage I can't 100% remember what colour trend this came out in but it, it's almost a jewel drop but it's in their normal gloss nouveau drop range but it's almost translucent enough to be a jewel drop but it's got a deeper colour to it and I really like this one so those were the drops that I'd used just in case you're interested. Oh and the glitter that I used um, was Enchanted Eden. I think this was an exclusive to the kit a little while back uh, but I really love this colour so I just had to use it again. Um, but sorry if you don't have it but uh, they, they do loads of different other colours of green so I'm sure you could find something similar if you wanted to recreate it or just a different colour if you're doing um, a different colour way of cards as well. So I hope you enjoyed this up close video looking at designer's choice number 20 21, which is the corner creations and I hope you enjoyed the kind of um, 
ideas that I've shown you. Obviously there are more ways that you can use this die set as well, especially combining it with other die sets that you might have. For example, actually, last month's designer's choice with all those circles, if you created um, you know, one of these corner pieces that was larger, you could have one of those circles in the centre of it, or maybe even it might just about fit in the centre of this one. You might only get a small amount poking out the edge, or you could just uh, take multiples of these and move them further apart and make um, a doily edge to one of those circle sentiments from last month as well. So um, I think they're really nice and versatile kind of dies, especially because you can snip out some details like the butterfly as well. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this up close video. Um, and don't forget the links to the designer's choice are in the description below the video or over on my blog as well. Um, and thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again in the next video. Bye!